Nostalgia Critic. Reviewing commercials. Like you give a shit. Commercials! After these messages. After these messages. After these messages. After these messages. Uh oh, what's the Green Goblin up to now? Oh no, he's forcing Spider Man to play his own Atari game! Actually, that is kind of evil. Watch yourself fall, Silk Slinger! This is an enjoyably goofy commercial, but what really sells it is the guy playing the goblin. Try to get up there in time, Spider Man! I think his dentist put meth in his laughing gas. If I don't get you webhead, my guy, you'll now see the Holy Hannah! I love this guy! He can't even leave the frame without going nuts! Whoa! Stop presenting! Show some dignity when you're in that costume! Holy Hannah! And you're running out of fluid! What's he even saying here? He's so excited, I can't make it out! You're running out of fluid! What? You're running out of fluid! Okay. I've watched this over a hundred times. I've studied it. I've analyzed every possibility. I still don't know what the hell he's saying. You're running out of fluid. <sighs> Here are my closest guesses. You're running out of fluid. 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 Whoa! We laugh at this, but honestly, it's not too far off from what some of the movies have. If Goblin and Spider-Man can relax on a roof in those ridiculous outfits, playing an Atari game isn't too far off. I could crush you like a bug right now. But let's play video games instead. Seriously, you told her you hunch? Yeah, I thought it was a good pickup line for some reason. Oh, it's gotta be less awkward than how I cut a Thanksgiving turkey or crawl on the floor to a chair with a Spencer's mask on it. Yeah, let's hope nothing as ridiculous is in our near future. Outside of a song and dance number, how could it? can I say, but web-slinging fun never looks so... pixelated. Is this more action than even Spider-Man can handle? Spider-Man, a video game from Parker Brothers, the ones to beat. Here comes Federal Express! Whoa, stand back! The world's most exciting toys are here! Ready on the ground! This is the Federal Express Air Cargo Playset. Yeah, I remember how jealous I was of the kids that had Federal Express playsets. Here I was watching the side of my painted house dry. I had no idea there was something even more boring! The door is opened, and a real conveyor system inside the plane moves the containers into the cargo bay. Hey, slow down! There's only so much excitement we can take! Now Federal Express takes off again with cargo for Phoenix. I have enough intensity with my pet rock, thank you very much. They're put in containers, loaded on trailers, and taken to the plane. Wow. Did that really deserve a wow? I could barely muster an eh. The van delivers packages to the airport. Wow. I'm prepared for a lifetime of disappointment. New York, Miami. Yeah, this commercial's pretty much as boring as it sounds. Come on, guys, you have the Micro Machine Man working for you. Could you utilize him somehow? This is so boring, my skin is actually turning into cardboard. The Federal Express Air Cargo Playset comes with everything you see here from Play School. FedEx, putting return to sender on your kid's imagination. Think we'll beat that time? Sure we will, after this complete breakfast, including my Frosted Flakes. Ah, Tony the Tiger. You represent everything youthful and strong with the voice of an 80-year-old. Let's see if you're any good. <laughs> Frosted Flakes good? They're great! Though Tony's, of course, still around, there was a very distinct formula that was used in the 80s and 90s ads. You see, it always starts with Tony befriending some random kid in some random sport who's always being made fun of by bullies. You two wanna take a horsey ride? You two up for a little game? Hey, you two, the kitty hill's over there. <laughs> you two coming in? They'll just wipe out. <laughs> Time to tie our sweaters around our chests and throw Cadillacs at puppies. I hope your service good. You guys can have the new kid. We don't want him. You're stuck with him. What's wrong with these dipshits? You're making fun of a kid that has a killer predator on his side. This is not gonna end well. We'll see how good you are. What are you gonna do? Sick your giant animated tiger on me? <laughs> but of course, it's the great taste of Frosted Flakes that brings out their inner tiger and transforms them into a sports star. Be bad if you're any good. Good? Yeah. They're good. Show them you're a tiger. Show them what they can do. I see some false advertising in that. Some meat, protein bars, vegetables, these are things that can make you a better athlete. Sugar frosted newspaper cannot. Nobody says, you know what make people who eat Wheaties even stronger? Candy flavoring. 
There's even chocolate covered versions with marshmallows. How is any of this supposed to make you a sports star? If they really wanted to be honest with the ads, they'd be like, Hey loser, sad that your parents died in a car crash? <laughs> I'll never be as cool as those guys. That's what you think. Tuffy the Tiger! What you need is a helping of my Tuffy Flakes. It brings out the toughness in you. So you think you're any good? Tuffy Flakes good? They're yeah. granulated sugar! Wait, what? Oh yeah, there's no wheat in this. We just scrape off the top of sugar cubes and dye them brown. That sounds incredibly unhealthy. Go get them, Tiger! <laughs> Show them that you're a Tuffy. Show them what you can do. I'm sluggish and slow. You just need more Tuffy Flakes. Keep them guessing, Tiger. You make some weird gurring sounds because you know what's cool. Problem. I feel dizzy and weak. That's just the diabetes setting in. What you need is some insulin. <laughs> Keep them on their toes, Tiger. You start your breakfast right with what most people call dessert. When you have the taste of Tuffy's Tuffy Flakes, it brings out the toughness in you. Player grossly misadvertised. Well, it's still fun, and Tony's such a great mascot. It's hard not to get sucked into all this sports tasting propaganda. Whoa, what are all these kids gathered around for? It's Johnny. He's gonna play Simon. Nobody beats Simon. Hey, hey, stand back! Son of a bitch thinks he can take on Simon! Wow, girl, I think that jacket just put you through early puberty. I will smell Johnny's jacket all through the night. It smells like SpaghettiOs and victory. I want you, Simon. I want to blow away this easily impressed group of 4th graders. Simon is the challenge you've been waiting for. And if you get very good at Simon, great rewards await you. Yes, if you take on the challenge of pushing beeping buttons, you get the great reward of them beeping without you pushing them. It takes coordination of hand and mind just to play the game. Thank you, Simon. I love how politely he thanks the machine before he soaks up the victory. Thank you, Simon. I want to thank you for a challenging game. It really did well to enhance my reflexes. Ah! Look at these kids. It's just Simon, guys. I mean, what do you think this is, Crossfire? You may be cool, Simon, but you're not Crossfire being played by Dante Bosco dressed as Firebender Zuko cool. Crossfire! Check out the look he gives when the girl puts the jacket on him. He's just like, Girl, you my bitch now. Simon says I own your ass. It ain't Crossfire, but as game commercials go, it's a close second. Simon is waiting for you from Milton Bradley. You my bitch now. One kid's meal. Please? Right away. So we all know McDonald's has Ronald McDonald, but for a while, Burger King had the Burger King Kids Club. It lasted for a good chunk of time until they realized the 90s wanted to die, and this was the last remaining threat of it. I mean, look at them. They're drenched in the 90s. It even has all the 90s token characters. The token geeky kid, the token Hispanic kid, the token black kid, the token wheelchair kid, and ooh, two token girls? The 90s aren't ready! Truth be told, it was kind of neat to have such a wide variety, but they never really had any characteristics like the McDonald's commercials. Ronald was confidently goofy, Grimace was a doofus, Hamburglar was a troublemaker. What are these kids' at story? Um, they kidnap kids through black magic? And don't forget to clean your room! But it's not that bad. This'll take you away from your ethical obligations. Alright! They... take pictures of boys bathing? Okay, you and this girl need a talking to. Turn away people they don't like. Who belongs to the Burger King Kids Club? He does. He does. I don't think so. You're turning away dinosaurs? What's wrong with you? Your coolness would have gone up a million percent if you had a T-Rex as a member. Definitely yes. Definitely not. For a crew that's trying to be so open and accepting, you sure are saying no to a lot of people. Definitely not. Screw bagpipe players! They can go to hell! No wonder your characters never sold that great. Hey guys, want to go to the toy store? Nah. Burger King made toys boring. I don't know if they'll ever get a reaction from us again. Ah! Spoke too soon! 
a valiant attempt, but they don't even mention their names in the commercials. All we're gonna see them as is the black kid, the Hispanic kid, and Cyclops. What do they call you? Wheels? Actually, yes. Awkward. The Burger King Kids Club. It's just for fun and just for you. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Oh, 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 bright ideas and an Oreo cookie. Always a classic jingle for a classic product. But while we all remember how to dunk and eat an Oreo cookie, what is up with these kids' reaction to them? I swear you could freeze any of these and it looks like the Oreos are opening up the dark dimension from Doctor Strange. <laughs> Even transform this kid into a young Bill Cosby, which is probably going to be very bad in the future. You got the wiggles and the jiggles all over the place. That takes on a whole new meaning. Don't look directly into this boy's eyes. It'll send you directly to hell. I need Jesus. It wasn't humanly possible. Well, here it is, folks. The first ever Game Boy commercial. And I'm not gonna lie, they may have overhyped it. Now you can have all the power and excitement of Nintendo right in the palm of your hand. Really? All the power and excitement of Nintendo, huh? Is that why in this 30 second commercial there is only one second of gameplay in it? I'm not even kidding. This is the only clip of game footage they show. But look! Giant robots on Doctor Who sets like it! And even that's a little awkward. I'm sorry, but seeing a giant machine come out and hold a calculator like a texting gourd doesn't look especially intimidating. The loser has to watch the Keanu Reeves version. And its games are interchangeable. Plus, Game Boy comes with the outrageous new game, Tetris. <laughs> outrageous Tetris, huh? There's many words to describe Tetris, but outrageous isn't usually one of them. So outrageous that only one second of it can be shown. To show the rest of it would blow your mind too much. Okay, if you want to do an ad truthfully, you do it like this. Now you can have all the power and excitement of Nintendo right in the palm of your hands. And by all, we mean literally one color, roughly four bits, and a variety of maybe five sound effects. Really crappy robots from the 60s love it. You could go to Game Gear, which in hindsight was a million times better, but because ours was a tiny bit smaller, it bombed! Enjoy what your mom will be playing on her phone in 20 years. Wait, does my existence rely on this? I totally didn't know that! Game Boy, only from Nintendo. A fun ad, even if it is overhyped. Now you're playing with power, portable power. Every morning at this time, Dad puts one of those great Ego waffles in the toaster. Yep. Who can forget Lego my Ego? The catchphrase nobody said because nobody would ever fight for one. Lego my ego. Lego my ego. But in the commercials, everybody wanted one and would go to crazy lengths to get it. Even though there were clearly many left behind, I feel like these are some extreme lengths to go to to you know, get one of them. What they come in like packages of eight, twelve? You, you can. Come on, guys. Time has arrived for the Ego Stump Suit. Probably the most extreme is a kid that created an invisibility suit with science. Hey, Lego, my ego! You're sinning against time and nature for an ego waffle! The world is not ready for such technology! Or deliciousness! It's cute and all, but if these ideas were done today, I think they might have gone a different direction. My dad always tries to get my ego waffle in the morning before I do, but with my Black Arts magic, the advantage is mine! I knew it could this to Mabu, if it is a Santisana, Ishiraka Parakashtoto. And that's how it's done! Oh no you don't, Eleven. This Eggo Waffle is mine! Lego Waffles is part of a complete breakfast. Lego my egg. I'll shut up. Weird, but harmless enough. A 
Lego knows how to focus on Stranger Things. And then there's weird ones like this that either show you an advertisement or show you nothing but black. I never got them. Tell me what you think. Weird, right? So random. Shopping makes me hungry, love a lot, Bear. Birthday cake, my favorite! Yeah, as many of you know, the Care Bears were a thing for a while, and that included toys. I'm not even sure I always got them. Like, one was for dress up. Did girls like to dress up bears? Was that a thing? But I'm already dressed! In what? My birthday suit! Ha 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 ha! We're nudists and proud! But strangely enough, the most frightening thing is when they would speak. I know that doesn't sound like anything, but just listen to when they talk. Someone wants to talk to you. I'm the secret bear. Ooh. We got braces! I promise I won't tell. Christ, did she take voice lessons from the girl in the ring? I'm the secret bear. Seven days. They also make cheap novelties when you can't afford actual presents. Cheer bear! He'll help you cheer from the sidelines. <laughs> no, seriously, what you get me? My goddamn leg is broken. As well as ruining birthdays. Birthday bear! Thank you, Aunt Sue! Yeah, no wonder he has no friends at this party. He's excited to get a Care Bear. Stay there! I'm gonna beat you up after this review! Come to Tender Heart Bear! Grandma's so proud! Give us some. Oh, that was not a good frame to freeze on. It's as if to say even the toddlers figure out quickly they're being gypped. Hey, as long as they don't talk and see yourself, lucky kid. I'm the secret bear! Oh! I guess they got the job done, but did they have to be so cutishly freaky? And share your special feelings today. I promise I won't tell. When the clock strikes. This character was kind of cool. He was called Mac Tonight, also known as Moon Mac. His whole purpose was to let you know that McDonald's is open later and, dare we say, a classy place to hang out at night? The answer is no, you may not dare to say that. At McDonald's, look cool and the character was pretty neat, but I'm sorry, this would never convince anyone McDonald's is an upscale place to be. It just ain't gonna happen. Mmm, these McNuggets are especially chickenless today. Oh, hello, Andre! Oh, hello, Alexander! I was busy having a griddle of the Mick variety! Oh, how frightfully witty! <laughs> <laughs> Why? Isn't that Julius from Walmart? Never mind me, I'm just seeing if they still have the Mick Lobster. Oh, is that a thing? Yes! Yes, that is. I guess it doesn't help that this moon guy is also a little creepy. Just watch what happens when you switch out the music from this actual ad that used to play. Chen. Only I and Bruce Campbell can do that. Still a cool character, even if he is a bit nightmare inducing. It's Mac tonight. Come on, make it Mac tonight. Meet the absolutely remarkable My Interactive Poo. <laughs> oh my god. Where's he, you're? Here? Hooray, you found him. He's an extraordinary new poo. Why are we talking about extraordinary new Pooh? Are we having lunch with Grandpa again? Pooh interacts with your child and computer for hours. That sounds very unsanitary. Download and take Pooh fun anywhere. Take Pooh fun anywhere? I'd imagine you get arrested for something like that. Hello, Jenna. Pooh knows my name. <laughs> okay, I'm way too childish to talk about a children's commercial, but let's just say this isn't my number one commercial, but it's definitely my number two. Hello, the incredible new My Interactive Poo. <laughs> okay. Wow, this goes back. A PSA from when the Adam West Batman show was still on. Let's see what 60s Batman had to throw at us. Quick, Batgirl, untie us before it's too late. It's already too late. I've worked for you a long time and I'm paid less than Robin. 
What? Holy discontent. Same job, same employer means equal pay for men and women. No time for jokes, fat girl. It's no joke. It's the federal equal pay law. Holy act of Congress. Can we talk about this later? Will that girl save the dynamic duo? Will she get equal pay? Contact the Wage and Hour Division, Department of Labor. Okay? Where do I start with this? First of all, Adam West is really phoning it in, isn't he? His life is on the line, yet it sounds like he's teaching a geometry class. Quick, bad girl, untie us before it's too late. And please tell me the property for X. Second, Batman's kind of an asshole. Equal pay for men and women. No time for jokes, bad girl. Wow, what a douche. I mean, come on, your vagina alone docks you like 20%. Even Robin's like, Come on, you crazy dame. We gave you the vote. What else do you want? Third, superheroes get paid? When did this start? Are superheroes getting regular wages? Do they have a union? Plus, I don't know what the paychecks are, but the idea of anyone getting paid less than Robin is friggin' hilarious. Fourth, she's just gonna let Batman die? Kids at home must be pissing themselves! She's about to kill their favorite hero and a young boy! Batgirl's gonna become everyone's most hated character since the killing joke! Fifth, even with the threat of killing Batman, women still aren't given equal pay! This was made back in the 60s, and it's still unequal! We'd rather see one of our favorite superheroes die than give a few more bucks to these weird titted creatures. Dude, if that's not gonna do anything, I don't know what will. Six? While it is well-intentioned, is this really the best time for Batgirl to bring this up? Couldn't they, like, sit down and discuss a back and forth or a protest or, I don't know, call your congressman like you just said? I mean, how awkward must things be between Batman and Batgirl after this situation? Batman, defuse the bomb! You know, this reminds me of the time when I was in a similar situation. Yes, I remember. Yeah, and you were gonna let me explode if you didn't get equal okay, pay. I know what you're talking about. You know, world hunger is still a big issue. Batman, not now! No, 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 I'm serious. I'm actually thinking maybe we should put your life on the line until we get world hunger solved. You know, you stay there and blow up. I'm gonna go get my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, I'm, but I'm still here, though. A well-meaning message done in a hilariously ridiculous way. What else could you say but holy acts of Congress? Contact the Wage and Hour Division, Department of Labor. Here's another PSA from Canada. Oh no. No, 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 no. I've been fooled by your PSAs before, Canada. You always try to make them look so friendly and nice. But then there's rape whistles and face burnings and putting things in your mouth. Well, I'm ready for you this time, Canada. Do your worst. It's nighttime in a kitchen just like yours. Uh-huh. All is quiet. Or is it? Blah, blah, blah. What the shit was that? The North American house hippo is found throughout Canada and the eastern United States. What? House hippos are very timid creatures and are rarely seen. But they will defend their territory if provoked. They come out at night to search for food, water, and materials for their nests. Uh, what? They, 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 they eat children or something? The favorite foods of the house hippo are chips, raisins, and the crumbs from peanut butter on toast. I'm not falling for your cuteness, cat. Where are you going with this? They build their nests in bedroom closets using lost mittens, dryer lint, and bits of string. And then they flamethrower your family don't smoke? House hippos sleep about 16 hours a day. That looked really real, but you knew it couldn't be true, didn't you? That's why it's good to think about what you're watching on TV and ask questions, kind of like you just did. A message from Concerned Children's Advertisers. Well, that was nice. Downright adorable. So, oh let me get God, this straight, Canada. Canada. You start off your dark, disturbing PSAs as cute and innocent, and start off your cute and innocent PSAs as dark and disturbing. What are you, Canada? You're like a riddle inside an enigma inside a please and thank you. 
Okay, cool. The house hippo. Don't believe everything you see. Fair enough. A cute, harmless, even educational PSA. Good for you, Canada. I will not have nightmares tonight. Okay. We good, Canada. We good. Thank you for that enlightening, very pleasant PSA. Well, on to the next one. Okay, so here's one from Britain called Electricity Football. Oh, cool! I always wonder what their version of electric football was like. Look! Over there, there's a football! Oh, oh yeah. it's that kind of football. That's fine. I'm still curious to see how kids play that. Hang on, mate. This place is electrified. It's alright if you don't touch anything. I'm not seeing any plugs or boards. Was this a... Parker Brothers game? Oh, 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 Jesus! Oh, good lord! Oh, sweet heavenly god, no! Oh my god, 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 oh my Stay out. Oh, trust me, I will! You electrocute kids like bug zappers! You're sick! You're sick, Britain! You can keep your Terry Gilliam because you're sick! You're sick! Oh, oh finally, a Starburst commercial. Okay, something a little less freaky. You tried these new berries and cream, Starburst? Pardon me. What kind of Starburst did you just say? Berries. Berries? Berries and what else? And cream. Okay, commercial, I'll bite. Where are you going with this? Berries and cream, berries and cream. I'm a little lad who loves berries and cream. Berries and cream, berries and cream. Oh, I'm a little lad who loves berries and cream. Give up. Just give up. Give up on everything. What are we doing? Is this really what we're paying people to give us now? We're denying good writers such wonderful paychecks so that piece of shit writers can give us this? This was a gift that only the rare exceptional talent could give us? And we said yes! Let's make this a hit! Let's reward the asshole who came up with this on his lunch break, stoned off his ass when he went in to pitch this commercial! And they said, Larry, you're stoned off your ass! And Larry said, yes I am! And they said, well, 11 million people are stoned off their asses too! Cause 11 million people watched it on YouTube! And not only that, they shared it and came back for more! They said, I'm not talented enough to come up with something so ingenious! And you got more! There are remixes of this commercial, there's other variations of this commercial from different angles! Completely different, mind you! Look, there's a version where he says this! Are those new berries and cream Starburst? That completely changes the dynamic of everything it was trying to accomplish! Is this what it takes now? Is this what it takes? If I wanted to sell this black couch, would I be like, Black couch, black couch, I pooped a black couch, and that would sound like a bajillion black couch? Would black couches stocks just go through the roof if I played that ad? I say no to you, berries and cream. I say no. I've taken a lot of stupidity over the years, but this lunacy madness take I will not. This commercial is awful. It's just stupid and awful. I'm sick of insanity being rewarded. I'm sick of laziness being counted as clever. I want something to make sense. There's good reason for my glistening skin and how my pores are so clean and clear. I eat little babies ice cream. It keeps me young. It keeps me light on my feet. I spring from activity to activity. When you eat little baby's ice cream, you'll wink and nod with great enthusiasm. Ice cream is a feeling. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I apologize. That version of me has expired. He uh, 
simply had nothing more to give. He tried. He tried very, very hard to look inside himself to find something, anything, that he could offer. But in the end, you just took too much from him, world. You just took too much from him. He will be missed. A moment of silence, if you will. Me, on the other hand. <gasps> what the hell? And this is the freakiest the thing I have ever that. seen. This is for something called Little Baby's Ice Cream? It would scare the piss out of any little babies watching it! It's so terrifying, I'm not even convinced it's made for little babies! I think it's made out of little babies! Don't believe me? Watch it again and just take out the ice cream part! Tell me if it makes a little too much sense! I eat little babies. It keeps me young. It keeps me light on my feet. When you eat little babies, you'll wink and nod. This is a special time. Little Babies is a feeling. Little Babies ice cream is people! Well, if there's anything I've learned from this commercial special, it's that fear sells everything. So, without further ado, I have a black couch to sell, and I know the best way to do it. Black couch, black couch, I pooped a black couch, I pooped a black couch, I pooped a black couch. Creepy moon people with pointy heads and chins, and who kill you in your sleep by the couch. Oreo kids that eat your souls with black couches. Black couches, black couches. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and pleasant dreams. Okay, don't get that scared. Uh, just making a real fast announcement here. On December 4th, that's a Sunday, at 11 a.m. at the Barnes & Noble in Naperville, Illinois, uh, my brother and I are doing a short little panel, just about an hour long, talking about Christmas specials, the best and worst Christmas specials there are, and we're gonna invite you guys to bring up some of your favorites and some of your worst, and afterwards we're gonna have a little meet and greet, you know, we'll sign autographs and DVDs and prints and stuff, Stuff like that anything you bring to sign as well and uh, we did this one year before and it went over wonderful and we're just doing it again because we love Christmas and it's coming up and we're so excited so again that's uh, Naperville Illinois the Barnes & Noble there December 4th at 11 a.m. we would love to see you guys hopefully we will see you there come on over let's talk Christmas specials take care <laughs> Me again. <laughs> uh, once again, doing the charity shout out. This week we are doing the Foundation for AIDS Research. Founded in 1985, the Foundation for AIDS Research is dedicated to ending the global AIDS epidemic through innovative research. With the freedom and flexibility to respond quickly to emerging areas of scientific promise, they play a major role in accelerating the pace of HIV and AIDS research and achieving real breakthroughs. Their funded research has increased our understanding of HIV and has helped lay the groundwork for major advances in the study and treatment of it. Since 1985, they have invested nearly $340 million in its mission and has awarded grants to more than 2,000 research teams worldwide. Help them win this fight against HIV and AIDS by going to their site, watching their inspiring videos, and donating today. There can be a cure if we all do our best to make it happen. Take a look and please donate. <laughs> 